few treasures of the Holy Catholic Church are as misunderstood as holy water is. It is a very great gift that God has given us as Catholics. But if we know to appreciate its hidden secrets, it can change our lives. But also, it can be abused. And that's what we want to prevent. Father Bande, does it really make sense for a Catholic in our days to believe in things like holy water? I mean, there are people who say that it was something of the Middle Ages when people believed in ghosts, so you needed holy water to throw ghosts away, and then you needed garlic, and then you needed this and that. Isn't holy water just another superstition? Well, let me ask you a question, Brother John. Uh, yeah, do, you believe, like that. <laughs> do, do you believe in devils? I do believe in devils, Father. Well, well then you should believe in holy water, because that's what we uh, were given by the Church in order to help us be protected uh, from the devils. But, Father, in the Gospels, we see our Lord Jesus Christ expelling devils, but he didn't use holy water. That's true. That's true. Well, because, but he did, he did use water, let us remember, um, before celebrating his uh, first mass, um, when he washed the feet of his disciples. Yeah. He did bless the water and he did wash the feet with his disciple, of his disciples in order to begin uh, and introduce all right, the, uh, the, last, the Last Supper and the First Mass. So holy water dates from the first century of the church. It's a, it's a sacramental, all right, um, that is a, an image of the sacraments. Let's remember that we have sa seven sacraments in the church, but we have hundreds of sacramentals. Sacraments, what are sacraments? Sacraments are um, those gifts. It's a gift, a sign, an outward sign that gives us grace from God. All right, that's, that's what the definition of a sacrament is. Now, a sacramental is, um, is something that is presented, given to us by the church um, in order to, um, to help us prepare ourselves to receive the sacraments. So it's, a, uh, it's something that is um, given to us by the church in order to, um, to, um, to prepare ourselves and to protect ourselves from the assaults of the devil and to prepare ourselves to receive the graces from God, the sacraments. So holy water is one more sacramental, I agree. But what is, I guess, each sacramental helps us in a specific way. What is specific to holy water different, differentiating it from the other sacramentals? Well, I think um, to begin with, the substance, uh, water. Uh, let's remember that uh, um, God, uh, when he, in Genesis, when he created uh, the world, he, he, he created the seas. And then our Lord Jesus Christ, when he was baptized, he sanctified all of the waters here on earth. So, so water is also used for the spiritual regeneration. Uh, it's used for baptism. So, so the first, in, in the first century, all right, um, and for many centuries after that, holy water was only blessed at one moment in the year, and that was at Easter, for um, for for the baptism of 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 those people who had been prepared at that time. So um, so holy water is um, is 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 an element that uh, was um, used for us uh, as a, as a as a symbol of our regeneration. Um, in 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 um, in um, in our spiritual lives, yeah, a new birth, so to speak. Exactly, exactly. So um, then, of course, holy water was um, uh, afterwards um, uh, discovered to be very useful in expulsing and 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 putting the devils to flee. I think that has. I don't know, Father, what do you think? But it seems to me that water in itself, our Lord chose water. Because it's something which purifies. It purifies us from our sins at baptism. Mm -hmm. And exactly. I guess maybe that's for a similar reason that it purifies the devils. It throws the devils out. I don't know. There we go. Yes, yes. Exactly. Well, when we think of our Lord washing the feet of the apostles, he's um, outwardly, um, he's cleansing them with water. But interiorly, he's also preparing them for Holy Mass. So there is a purification element there. So holy water, of course, water purifies. Uh, a priest, when, he, um, when he's celebrating Mass just before the consecration, all right, there's that beautiful moment of the ceremonial moment where he, he washes his hands. Uh, 
All right. Um, some some of the children there in catechism in my little chapel, when I present them, uh, you know, the um, the the different uh, moments of of mass, some of the children say, "Well, Father, why do you wash your hands? Didn't you wash your hands already in the sacristy? <laughs> <laughs> why do you have to wash your hands during mass if you've already washed them in the sacristy?" So I explain to them that it's 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 a interior purification. You see, so it's a sign. All right, it's the exterior sign to manifest something interiorly that we are wanting, that we are asking from God, um, that he washes us from our from our iniquities, from our sins, from our failings. Is there a prayer that you say at this moment interiorly? There is. There is a prayer, yes. Yes, there is a beautiful prayer um, that I don't remember at this moment. Right okay, now. No, I was going to ask if you knew it by, <laughs> by, by heart. Wait, I think I, it's Lava Me Domini, Father. La, yes, yes, yes. How do you translate that in English? Um, um, I guess because I, I you pray in Latin. I guess most I, of the time I pray it in French. Actually, okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a secret prayer. It's an interior prayer. You can pray it exactly, exactly. But I, there is a prayer there where you you. I ask think it's basically pray. asking the pure. Uh, yes, because yes. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquities. Yes, purify me from my sins. I guess that's a, a loose translation. I don't know how the liturgically it should be right. prayed by the priest, but. Translating from Latin loosely, it should be, yes, something like that. that yeah. Something like that, yes, yes, yes. So it's 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 always this interior purification where you want to be cleansed, you know, from from the sins in order to prepare yourself for the sacrament of the Eucharist. So this purification also well um, cleanses us from uh, from the assaults of the devil. That's beautiful. Uh, so some people ask, um, well, Father, um, you know, we all, when we enter into church, we all sign ourselves with holy water, mm -hmm. make the sign of the cross. So this is one sacramental, right? Always remember that as you enter to, into the church, you're performing two sacramentals. So the first sacramental is you're doing the sign of the cross. Sign of the cross is a sacramental. It's in itself. A, in itself. It's exorcistic. It's, it's a sign of your belief in the resurrection of Christ. So, so when we go into the church, there's always um, a, um, a holy water available. So, um, so you make the sign of the cross with holy water. Why? It's beautiful because you're, 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 you're leaving the secular outside the church, so the secular world, and you're entering into the sacred, sacred world. So you're you're leaving you leaving the world and you're entering into let's say the spiritual world. So the, so this is a, a moment that is very important because we want to cleanse ourselves. So you're 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 making a profession of faith where you believe in the resurrection, but you're also using holy water in order to cleanse yourself from all evil attachments that you might have that you're bringing with you any any bad thoughts or 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 moments of uh, of 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 fear or whatever you just want to be liberated right from uh, from from that and so some people say well why do you therefore bless yourself with holy water when you leave the church <laughs> or should you bless yourself with holy water when you leave the church i say of course of course you should bless yourself with holy water why because well you're leaving the sacred you're going into the secular well but it's asked to ask protection yeah. so as you enter it's to ask for purification and as you leave it's to ask for protection what oh please brother john go ahead no while you were speaking father i was thinking that many times um we're, we're kind of unconscious of why we do certain things so many times we enter the church we we bless ourselves with holy water but we don't really know why we're doing it we're not making that interior act of faith for example right. we we make a sign of the cross but we don't make that interior act of faith saying i believe in the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. The more we, be, we become conscious of our actions and, and their spiritual value, right. the more we end up, um, uh, the more value we end up giving to those actions. No? The more well, this, we benefit from The it. more we take advantage of them, yeah. I guess would be a way of saying And I would say that that's the reason why we're re recording these podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> we're recording these podcasts exactly to help our um, faithful Catholics uh, brothers and and sisters in the faith to um to to kind of get a notion of the beauty of our church and the sacraments the sacramentals for them to to start to explicitate and to 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 use um their um what is given to them in a more profound way 
you see, in order to live their faith. Um, one of the big, um, um, let's say, trials or, or weaknesses of our Catholic Church today is that we have a lot of cradle Catholics. Catholics that were born Catholics, and there's nothing wrong with that, all right? And I hope we have a lot more people that are born in the Catholic Church. But they, since they were born in the Catholic Church, they have, they're, they're, they're cradle Catholics. Well, they just kind of go along with everybody else. And they never kind of dive into their faith. They do the catechism. They, they, they do their formation to receive the, the sacraments of life. Uh, so baptism, first communion, confirmation, and, and there may sometimes marriage. And, but then they, they kind of just... Kind of relax in their faith. Relax in their faith. And that's, that's why we are recording these podcasts in order for our cradle Catholics to become faithful Catholics, you yeah. see, to become convinced Catholics and to love their faith and to live their faith and to, and to grow in their faith. So this is why, you know, I think this is really nice. And holy water is something that we should, we should try to use and have at home. It's not something that is only used in church. You know, when you enter the church or when you leave the church, you use holy water. No, go to the sacristy. Ask there in the sacristy, they have recipients, they have, they have containers there. There's always containers with holy water available. Ask for holy water there to be able to take back home. Because you, you can use holy water at home. Father, let me ask a question to Brother Morgan. Brother Morgan, how many years have you been in the Heralds now? Brother John, what does that have to do with holy water? <laughs> You'll see in a moment. <laughs> No, Brother John, I joined the Heralds in 2014, so almost 10 years. Okay. 10 years ago. So, it's in our rule that we need to always carry holy water with us. All the Heralds, we always have in our pockets a small bottle of holy water. I'm not going to ask you if you have yours on you right now. I have mine. <laughs> <laughs> and when we go to bed, we always leave a tiny bottle of the holy water next to our bed, where we can always reach it. Fine. Now, Father just said that we need holy water, not just when we are in church, but at all moments. And that's what we do. Mm-hmm. So tell me why we have this. What's the use of having holy water? In church, he explained why. Mm-hmm. And at home, when you're asleep, when you're doing anything else, what's the use of holy water then? Well, I think it's exactly for that reason that Father stated beforehand is that it protects us because uh, we're on this earth to be tried, to go through trials. And trials can happen to us. Uh, temptations can happen to us at any moment of the day. So if there's a certain time in the day or at the night you wake up, you're, I don't know, you could be having a bad dream or you wake up and you, you want a special, you want God's protection, bless yourself with holy water. Or during the day you have holy water on you, the devil's going to maybe tempt you less. So I think it's almost just like the same way we wear a miraculous medal all the time or we wear a scapular. I think holy water is another weapon that God gave us a shield against evil and a weapon against evil where we are we are protected God, we have god's protection okay so let me let me ask you brother morgan um You're a, a question <laughs> also to um, no what you just to um, to better understand um what is holy water you spoke about the scapular so there's the brown scapular there's the green scapular these these sacramentals are given to the church or crucifix or an image of our lady these are all sacramentals these actually, are all, right? yes they're all sacrament there's hundreds of them thanks be reading the bible is a sacramental exactly exactly having the rosary uh, uh, where having a, a rosary in your pocket the miraculous medal these are all sacramentals well somebody might ask you well brother brother morgan aren't those your lucky charms <laughs> lucky charms. It's been a lot of years since I've had lucky charms. <laughs> so, what's the difference between a lucky charm and a sacramental? Could you could you help us? How on would that? you define a lucky charm? Father? Well, a lucky charm is the um, uh, um, uh, is, uh, is 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 has has something to do with um, with witchcraft or let's say with like uh, superstition. superstition. It's superstition. Hmm. So as I, I remember, you know, like uh, when I was a child, um, you know, we would have uh, these uh, pet rocks. Right. All right. I don't know if people back in the, uh, uh, this was back in the 70s, 80s. All right. There was this this fad, all right, a fashion, a fad in, in Canada. Okay. And I think it was also in the United States. All right. They, uh, they had these pet rocks. So okay. you could buy a little box. And there was your, your pet rock. All right, and you would you would have your pet rock. All right, so so we as kids we'd bring them to school and we'd put them on our desks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the pet rock, all right, was supposed to bring bring you protection. All right, okay. it was your lucky charm. 
This is what it was going to um, to to give you success. Mm-hmm. All right. So so some people mix mix up the lucky charm with the sacramental. There's a big difference. Mm, of course. All right. There's a big difference. Can you help us out? Or well, do you I think want the sacramentals. Uh, well, no, of course. I would, maybe if you could help me out. Yes, but I think the lucky charms. Obviously, they are never approved by the by the church. Now the sacramentals are improved and encouraged by the Catholic Church, and we have the certainty that um, that they come from God. Right. Many times, something like a lucky charm or something where there enters, there could enter witchcraft or these these exactly, types of things exactly. that unfortunately do exist. That you could almost that you know come from the devil or are inspired by the devil, and so we have to take a lot of care um, not to confound one thing with the other. So of the, course, the, there's the, innocent things that. With children, you know, uh, they have with, their yeah. play with whatever. I'm not talking about that. Um, but there's, a, I think, a big difference in the sense that with the sacramental, we know that it has, that it the blessing transmits of the church. God's blessing, mm-hmm. God's grace. It mm-hmm. brings us closer to heaven. It helps us to practice virtue. Right. Many things that a lucky charm isn't going to help us. No. So the, the big difference, if you allow me, is that the lucky charm, all right, um, has power in itself. You it see, that's the superstitious. Okay. Superstition is that the lucky charm, all right, in itself is powerful. It's like it's like a piece of God. Mm-hmm. You see, and the sacramental, no, the sacramental it depends on the disposition of the soul. Oh, very like if a pagan goes and uses holy water, you know, it, it, it's not going to have much of an effect on him. Why? Because he's not open to holy water. You see, he has to have a disposition. He has to want. He has the desire. Now, the sacrament, no. The sacrament is... Um, it produces the grace. Produces the grace. Yeah. You see? That's why. So the sacrament of baptism produces the grace. Sacrament of, of Holy Communion produces the grace. Now, the sacrament of holy water or of the scapular, no. That depends on your disposition. But it's it's a blessing from God. Is where we are asking God to... Um, to 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 unite us ourselves to Him through these objects, you see, they are kind of intercessors for us. They 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 remind us of our of the power of God, of the presence of God, of the love of God that He has for us. But Father, can I make an objection to what you just said? Yes. Okay. So holy water. I've always heard that holy water has the power to forgive venial sin. In fact, there are many saints who have said that. Traditionally, they say that when you bless yourself, bless yourself with holy water, your venial sins are forgiven. But then, this is something which is proper to the sacrament of confession. If the holy water can do it, it has power in itself, doesn't it? Yes, yes. Well, it's it's be- with regards to your disposition. All right. Um, once again, I say, if a pagan goes and crosses himself with holy water, yeah. um, he's not going to be forgiven with of, of his sins. <laughs> Um, because he's doing it out of uh, theatrical, um, let's yeah, that's say, why he's doing it. Yeah, he's it's a, it, it's it's something artificial. Yeah. So, but if a Catholic goes and crosses himself with holy water, yes, his venial sins are are um, are forgiven, and this is out of the power of of God's uh, mercy. God gave us this uh, this this grace, um, allowing us to um, because the venial sins. Let us remember they are venial, and and even the just man sins seven times. So um, so we have disposition. We have the means to be able to um, to um, erase the effects of venial sin by using the sacramentals. It's not only holy water; it could, just the sign of the cross will also um, cancel the venial sins, or that there the, the blessing of the priest in the beginning of the mass. Right, he he goes and blesses us. That also kind of cancels the ven- the venial sins. So all the sacramentals have this this uh, this power. It's um it's interesting that uh, that we should always remember that uh, that the sacramentals um are 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 um let's say um offered to us as a manifestation of God's love and of His mercy to us. Yeah. Now holy water, all right. Um, Contrary to the sign of the cross, like if you do the sign of the cross, you have a sacramental and you're using the sacramental. But if you have water, all right, can a lay person produce holy water? Memorial? If you already have it? No, you have plain water, which is not no. holy water. You have plain water plain and you water? want holy water. Yes. Can you, can you produce holy water? No. 
let's say you go and you bless the water. No. Can you produce the? No, unfortunately not. You need an ordina ordained minister. Yeah. Exactly, Brother Morgan. So the first ordained minister that has the power to, um, to uh, bless holy water is the bishop. He's the ordinary, yeah. all right? So he's the one. He's the first one. And then after that, he delegates to the priests mm -hmm. and to the deacons. You said in the past this was done only once a year. Once a year on Easter. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. Wow. yeah, holy water was only, it was the Easter water. I remember when I was a child, uh, it was th that that tradition also already still existed where um, the first, or, um, let's say when the sun would rise, people go to the uh, to the rivers and 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 gather some water yeah it would be to have easter, canada, easter in canada year. yeah it would be easter water then they would have they bring it to the to the to to the church they have right, it blessed exactly. okay have so it fresh blessed. water which they just yeah, it's very yeah, beautiful it the like easter a new water, water like you have new fire for easter you have new water which you exactly. just exactly 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 but father nowadays the blessing of the holy water is quite simple but if sometimes when we look through old old liturgies old books I've seen, I've noticed uh, in historical works that whenever the priest would bless water, he would always bless salt together with the water. I guess when you were young, when they would take this water from the rivers, did they still have this right? What does, what does this mean? Yes. Well, because salt uh, has the property of, of purifying. Okay. And so, um, and so in, the, um, in the old Roman rite of blessings, they used to have the blessing and the exorcism of the water and the blessing and the exorcism of the salt. And they would mix both together. And the salt would, be, would have the property of keeping the water from evaporating. Especially in Italy, uh, just think okay. of you know the uh, the, um, uh, the 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 summers there in um, in Italy in Rome especially is very hot. So if you would have um, holy water fonts and uh, they would stay um, in 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 the sun, let's say they would evaporate very quickly if they didn't have salt. So salt has a purifying aspect um, and 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 also a um, conserve, conserve, conserve conserving conserving aspect. In, in the water. Okay. Today, today in the, um, in the uh, new rite of blessings, um, it's been simplified. Okay. You see, it's been simplified. But, um, but there's also always the possibility of blessing salt and to mix the salt with the water. It's something that is a very beautiful tradition. And in my little chapel in St. Agnes, um, there are many people that come to me asking um, if I could visit their homes and visit their families in order to bless them. Because, um, well, they want God's blessing, they want his protection, but they all will also want his purification. Because there are certain evil spirits that do um, linger and are sometimes um, thrown against families. I mean, there are some people who have even evil intentions, and they um, they therefore curse a certain family out of vengeance or out of, uh, um, let's say, they they they're just um, um, they 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 want to uh, to harm. Um, uh, another family. So this family feels sometimes this weight of, of the curse or the weight of the evil spirits. So they ask for me, the priests, all right, to go and, and bless them and to, to visit them. So I, I come with holy water. Okay. I always come with holy water and there I tell them and I leave them holy water and I tell them to always sprinkle holy water because holy water will break the jinx, will break the curse. And, uh, but then I tell them they have to grow in their, in their spiritual lives and that they have to eventually, all right, if it's possible for them to, um, to receive the sacraments because holy water is a sacramental. It is very powerful, but it's a means that is given to us in order to attain the sacrament. And it's the sacrament that will shield the Catholic against any evil um, um, action or movement against them. Can I ask a question, Father? Yes. Should a Catholic be scared of these types of things? Well, a Catholic should be scared of these types of things if the Catholic is not in peace with God. Yes. If a Catholic is in peace with God and 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 is a a, a um, uh, frequent soul? free frequent going um, uh, frequent. Um, uh, it frequents the sacraments. Frequents the sacraments. Yes. Yeah. Um, then he has should have no fear the devil because right. god is all powerful god is omnipotent god is there we go yes yes so if you have peace in the soul if you're at peace with god you've gone to confession you receive a weekly communion uh, you pray your rosary you should have no fear and right. above all after our podcast today if you have a 
great to wash the holy water as well. Well, there you go. Always yes. sprinkle. So those, this is what I tell my little congregation there in St. Agnes Chapel. I tell them, um, because there are some families there that have um, situations where um, they still can't, um, uh, let's say, um, go to um, to the to Holy Communion table. So, so I tell them not to despair, to have faith, all right? They're in a situation where they still can't receive the sacraments. But I tell them, you have the sacramentals. The sacramentals are um, um, gifts that, that are given to us in order to prepare us, in order to help us one day receive the sacraments. So you have holy water, you have the cross, you have the prayer of the rosary. So I tell them in order for them not to despair, in order for them to feel welcome at church and to feel welcome at mass, you know, that they should use the sacramentals as means to, to give them the strength to one day be able to kneel down at the confessional and ask forgiveness and therefore be reconciled with God and to receive the sacrament of confession, sacrament of, of communion. So it's, it's, it's these people that have to be careful about the, um, let's say, the actions of the devil. Because not having the sacrament, yeah. you see, you're more vulnerable. Sacramentals are strong, but um, they still are sacramentals. The sacrament is the exterior sign of grace, God's power. But Father, now that you mentioned sacramentals, I remember that what St. Louis de Montfort teaches, of course, it's not a sacrament, but the surest, the most uh, safest way you can go closer to God before the sacraments is, I guess, the sacramental which protects you the most is consecration to Our Lady. But when we do this consecration to Our Lady, we become slaves of love in her hands. We belong to her, as St. Louis de Montfort teaches. And of course, in the heralds, we wear, this is a sacramental, we wear a chain around our waist. There are people who do the consecration to Our Lady, they wear a chain around their neck, etc. To remind themselves always during the whole day that they do belong to Our Lady entirely mm. as, as children, but also as her property. We belong to her, we are in her hands. And at least as far as protection is concerned, I've heard of many, many cases of people who, who were undergoing diabolical influence, who were, who were going through a lot of problems in their life because of the influence of the devil. Once they do the consecration to Our Lady, they are freed. Hmm. Uh, of course, all the sacramentals have their role. All of them have their importance. The holy water is extremely important. But also, if somebody requires help, not that somebody is under the spell of the devil, but if somebody requires help in belonging entirely to God, I guess the best thing the person can do is to consecrate yourself through the hands of Our Lady. I mean, absolutely, absolutely. This is a very well um, um, remembered, uh, Brother John. This is um, actually w one another, uh, one of the other devotions that I suggest to um, to to my. Um, um, parishioners there in, in my little chapel who, for various reasons, are not able to receive the sacraments yet. Um, so I tell them, listen, you can receive the sacramental of consecration. Consecrate yourself as a slave of love to Jesus, to our Lord, as a slave of love through the hands of his blessed Mother Mary. And that will protect you, that will help you, that will guide you, you see. You may not be able to receive communion right away, all right, because of your situation, it's impossible. But you can do a sacrament. You can do a a communion of desire. You see, a spiritual communion, which is also a sacramental. Yeah, spiritual communion. So these are all kind of pastoral means that the church, in her motherliness, in her in her desire to 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 receive everybody. All right, she she gives and she offers for us to um. To, to be nourished at the levels where we are. You know, if I can't receive the sacraments today, sacrament today, that's not a problem. I have the sacramentals. And then, and then, uh, and then once I receive the sacraments, then I have other sacraments that I can receive and, and that I can desire. And, and it's always a spiritual growth because this is all in order for us to enter into union with God. You see, this all, our ultimate goal in, in using and receiving the sacramentals and the sacraments is always to be able to do God's will, 
to be able to unite ourselves to God and to enter into a loving relationship with God. See, to be friends with our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And to be friends with him, well, we have to learn to receive and to use what he's given us. Yeah. You see? So, so this is why I think holy water has a secret that we still have to kind of maybe elaborate and, and, and to, to, to discover. And that secret is God's love. It's his purifying grace of wanting to protect us, but also all wanting us to, to, to be purified and to be united to him. Holy water is a sacramental that we should, um, that we should not be afraid to use abundantly. <laughs> uh, I think it, one of the, the objections, Father, above all for people who, I don't say they, they doubt God's love, but, um, for people that have a difficult, it's kind of something implicit in the back of our heads is the, how much God really loves us. Because I think one of the objections that we make is the following, but holy water is something that is so abundant nowadays. Nowadays, it's, it's not just it. blessed once a year or given to us once a year and we have to conserve it and refill the flask. No, we can have it blessed at any time by a priest. And when there's very few places in the world, uh, thanks be to God, where there's a lack of water. It exists, but uh, water is so abundant. Yes. The human body is made up of 70% of water. The earth is made up of how much of water exists. And we kind of, because of it, it's so, so abundant and it's so easy to get, we kind of think that it has little value. <laughs> yeah, we abuse of it, yes. But God's true. love is so great mm. and he made it so easy for us but it's not because of that that it's so abundant that it's worthless. Yeah. Right. But it's a proof of God's love. It has great value and mm. great... God uh, loved us so much that he wished to use something abundant to give it to us. So easy, so easily put at our disposal. Yeah. Yes. And we don't take advantage of it. So I think that's one of the secrets. Yeah, we don't take advantage of it and we sometimes abuse of it and we, and we destroy it too. How many places uh, today, uh, um, you know, they, they, they just kind of alter water and, and, and with all the, um, well, the, the, let's say the material corruption, right? Yeah. Um, um, this, is, this is a manifestation of, of sin when you see pollution that is being created around us and they pollute the rivers, they pollute the, the, um, the, uh, the, the lakes, they pollute the, the, the ocean. This is something that should concern us because why? Because it's a manifestation of God's, uh, of man's sin. This is why um, we should always remind ourselves, although God, our Lord Jesus Christ, sanctified all the waters when he was baptized in the, the Jordan River, all the waters were sanctified after he was baptized. Imagine, God Therefore, sanctified all the waters. But why does a priest still has to bless the water in order for water to be blessed, to be called holy water? Because despite God having um, um, blessed all the waters, well, that blessing was broken by man's sin. And it's being broken continually. And being broken continuously. That's a whole different outlook on pollution, right? I mean, and many times we think pollution. about there you go. pollution because, oh, because of the biological and this and that, but as an offense to God yes. and kind of destroying God's beautiful nature that he, he gave us yeah. for us to and also, come closer I mean, to him. It's more than an act in itself, it's always a consequence of sin. Mm -hmm. When uh, in the, let's suppose in the Middle Ages, when you had a community of saints, when you had they would not do activities which would lead to the destruction of nature. They would use of nature and it was given for man to use. They would prog um, they would transform nature. Into something more beautiful, something more, more beautiful. sublime. Yes. The whole of many, many huge parts of Europe where marshlands were, were, were dirty, were unhealthy places, which were saved by the monks. Yes. They worked over there. They transformed it into healthy places. They planted over there. So they took something which was naturally unhealthy or naturally uh, dirty. They purified it. They sublimed it. But in our days, we find man who takes something which is pure, given by God, and then we, like you said, it's a manifestation of sin. When yes. man starts sinning, all pollution, of this follows. Pollution is something that we should be concerned about uh, and that we should refrain from from doing. We should we should we should be in harmony with nature and not be destructive with regards to nature, because nature is a symbol of God's love. It was. Let's always remember that our body is part of nature, and that's why we have to respect our body. Why? Because we are living temples of God. So creation is not something bad. Creation is positive. Yeah. 
you see, and, and we should therefore want to protect our creation, the beauty of nature, but not adore nature. Like some people today have kind of shifted towards um, embracing the trees and being adorers of nature and, and not wanting man, saying that man's the problem here in nature. No, yeah. no, we, we're, we're Catholics, we're Christians, we believe in Genesis, you see. So we, 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 we see nature as a manifestation of God's love that is being offered to us in order for us to use, in order for, for us to progress in our love, in our in our union with God. God made nature for man to use and for man to sublime, including water. Exactly. Among all exactly. the other things. Water, yes. If man, anything you do outside of this is wrong. If I give make nature superior to man, then I'm wrong. But then again, if I destroy nature, which is given for man to sublime and to use, that is wrong as well. So Father, unfortunately, our time is almost up. So it's been a very wonderful conversation talking about holy water, I'm sure. <laughs> and all those who are watching us, uh, it's been very useful for all of us. Okay, well, I would just like to remind everybody to use holy water all the time, not to be afraid to bring holy water back home, use it in um, in your day-to-day -day lives, you can put it in your food, you, you can use it at all times. Why? Because these are, these are sacramentals, so holy water is a sacramental that was offered to us in order to uh, unite ourselves better to God. It's, it's our manifestation of devotion, it's a pious um, um, act of love where we want to, uh, well, have something holy around us. Um, and, and, and holy water, being blessed by a priest in the name of Jesus, Christ becomes holy. It really does. And, and can expel all the devils and all evilness, evilness around us. So I wish you, therefore, um, the, to uh, grow in devotion to holy water, to use it abundantly, and may God, therefore, in his love, bring you always closer to his sacraments, which are the true, uh, let's say, uh, um, manifestations of his grace and of his love. Thank you, Father. So can you give us your blessing? The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Salve Maria. Salve Maria. Salve Maria.